And welcome in a very happy Wednesday to you now here, March the 6th. It is game time decisions here on the Sports Grid Network. I'm Joe Neri. Appreciate you hanging with us here as we get ready for a absolutely uh, loaded card this evening here, not just in college basketball, where, of course, the uh, the madness has officially begun here. Uh, as we are just a couple of uh, weeks away from Selection Sunday, we've got conference tournaments um, that has arrived. Uh, we've got 32 conference tournaments in all. And, of course, uh, we've got three more getting ready to tip off tonight. So we got much to talk about when it comes to college basketball here tonight. And let us not forget uh, the NBA with a seven-game slate here tonight also Extremely interesting here with some of the matchups as we get ready, of course, to wind down the regular season of the NBA. And we've got games here tonight uh, featuring, well, we'll start with the late night games and work our way back. How about the Milwaukee Bucks taking on the Golden State Warriors? A matchup tonight we are going to be very interested in seeing here as the Milwaukee Bucks Boy, they fire the coach. They get Doc Rivers in there, and look at this. They refuse to lose, even without Giannis in the lineup. They don't care. What an unbelievable game that was on Monday, and we uh, were live with you on Monday when we saw the news come down that, of course, Giannis was not going to be in the lineup, and we watched that line move nearly eight points in favor of the LA Clippers and uh, last time I checked uh, no one player is ever worth eight points in the NBA and boy oh boy uh, giving the Milwaukee Bucks points in that spot was not a great idea as they ended up winning that game outright well we find ourselves kind of in a similar situation here as Giannis again with a uh, it's a calf they're calling it an Achilles uh, strain right now and nothing good comes when they use the word like Achilles uh, because that means one wrong move here these things don't often heal themselves without just staying off it and obviously uh, I think they're going to be very cautious here with Giannis and not rush him back they are in the midst of a very long road trip right now out west a road trip that will in fact include not just Golden State here tonight, but uh, they have got the Lakers. Then they've got the uh, the Clippers. Uh, the next couple of games are going to be rough go here for the Milwaukee Bucks. So will they push Giannis to play tonight? That is the uh, that is the question. We know Middleton is out, and currently right now we're not seeing a whole lot listed for the Golden State Warriors as far as injuries. So as you can see, that line hovering. Right around the three, three and a half uh, point uh, market there with a 227 and a half is hanging in there. And I'll give you a, a, a very interesting situation right now with these two teams. They have both been, uh, as of uh, the last two and a half weeks, pretty much just before the All Star break and right after the All Star break, these two teams have been the most profitable teams to back to the under when it comes to uh, looking at totals here. It's kind of hard to believe, but the numbers are staggering uh, when you look at them between Golden State and uh, this uh, this uh, Milwaukee Bucks team, even with Griffin still there as the head coach. The Bucks have now gone 14-1-1 to the under in their last 16 games. The Warriors, by the way, they are on a 14-3 and run to the under in their last 17 games. Golden State is also on a monster tear since Draymond Green has returned uh, from the suspension, going 14 and 7 straight up. But how about 15 and 6 against the number since Draymond uh, was unsuspended and came back to the team here? So they have been uh, they have been through it this team, and they are still battling, and they are coming off one of the most embarrassing defeats we have seen in a very, very long time by the Boston Celtics on Sunday. Now they're home. They've had a uh, a day or so to uh, to kind of shake that off, and I think they're going to be very, very focused here tonight. But the problem is, while they can be as focused as they want, the Golden State Warriors this season 
have been much better on the road than at home. They're just about a 500 team at home here. That is not the Golden State Warriors of years past. We are very much used to them being uh, home dominant, but that has not been the case. But they better figure it out here tonight because even if Giannis doesn't go, yeah, I mean, Milwaukee is bringing it right now, and this is going to be, I think, the matchup of the night. Also, uh, the matchup uh, is going to get pretty interesting here between the Cavaliers and the Hawks tonight at the State Farm Arena in Atlanta. And right now, the Hawks, the who? Yeah, the Atlanta Hawks, uh, one of the single worst ATS teams in the National Basketball Association this year. I'm talking terrible ATS. In fact, 20 and 41 against the number on the season. They're also 15 and 16 straight up and 10 and 21 against the number at home. So what does that mean? Well, it means we're, of course, betting them here tonight against the Cleveland Cavaliers, who, by the way, are also going through it. Uh, not only will they not have um, their leading scorer there, Donovan Mitchell, their uh, quarterback, but they just lost Evan Mobley against Boston uh, last night in an insane win against the Celtics, just a shorthanded and all, and they somehow managed to pull out that upset and come from behind last night. Now they had to hop on a plane and fly to Atlanta and get ready to take on the Atlanta Hawks, who are hoping that Max Struess will be able to go uh, tonight. He, too, uh, still listed as questionable for this game, but you lose Donovan Mitchell, you lose your big man, uh, Evan Mobley, and you, I mean, everything they had to go ahead and win that game at home against the Celtics. And now they had to fly out last night and take on this Hawks team that has, listen, they're not a good team, and we know this, but can I make the argument that the Atlanta Hawks might actually be a better team without Trey Young screwing it up for him? Because that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing an Atlanta Hawks team being much better defensively. And I know Jalen Brunson didn't play last night. I get it. But again, you're in the garden. You're, you're with a Knicks team here that has been there and done this before. And they got bullied. They got pushed around last night. And Atlanta handled business. I think Atlanta handles business again here tonight. But boy, oh boy, if uh, you're a situational handicapper in the NBA, there is no more interesting spot than that, that the Hawks and the Cavs are in here tonight, both on the second of a back-to-back. -back. And are the Clippers worthy of laying seven points on the road to the Houston Rockets? We'll talk about that game as well coming up as we are getting ready ton, and I mean a ton, of hardwood action here tonight. And we have got you covered as Game Time Decisions continues here on The Grid. on the road in college basketball is an absolute landmine. I would not do it. I won't do it the rest of the year. I'm done doing that because it just consistently loses. I mean, three possessions in a nine-point game in which the opposition now is the clock, not the actual team you're facing, right? Right, right. And, and these guys are taking up shots. I, I mean, it's just like, that's why it's the NBA. In-game live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. Athletes in Canada, Wayne Gretzky, Connor McDavid, no longer can be part of these sports betting ads. Now what's interesting is there is technically a carve out that will still let these athletes and celebrities appear in sportsbook ads, 
but it's only if those ads are slanted toward responsible gaming. So you could still have a Conor McDavid saying, hey, bet responsibly on TV in Ontario. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. 4.22, the fat man alive. The guy just made himself a whole lot of money, did he not? By uh, by now holding the record for the fastest 40-yard dash. But if it's one thing we know is that doesn't translate into quality football players in the NFL. So uh, somebody will uh, somebody will bite and overdraft him because he simply uh, ran faster than everyone else. It's just rinse and repeat. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. Welcome back in Game Time Decisions. March Madness, it is uh, upon us here, and we love this time of month. Why? Well, it signals uh, college basketball here, and there is nothing more maddening uh, than watching uh, playoff college basketball, which is essentially what we're dealing with right around now as conference tournaments are already off to a crazy start. We've had some major upsets in the Atlantic Sun Conference, for instance. Uh, we've uh, we've seen losses by number one and number three seeds uh, in these, uh, you know, win or go home scenarios, which is what a lot of these mid-majors are. Uh, and we've got more starting here tonight, but we also don't want to forget, we still have to finish out the regular season here with the big boys too, the blue bloods, the uh, the major conferences, and we do have a ton of top twenty-five action in store here tonight uh, as we wind down the regular season, and it's going to start early and it's going to start often here. Six thirty, in fact, I believe, in just about fifteen minutes, bottom of this hour, it'll kick off with Nova, who is clearly a bubble team, taking on Seton Hall, and you know. And I know that our good friend, Coach James Young, in all likelihood is uh, somewhere behind the bench here of Seton Hall at this game tonight at the Prudential Center in uh, Newark, New Jersey, uh, which is probably why he couldn't be with us. But it should be a good game. Why? It's a pickup. And both of these teams can ill afford uh, another loss. So this is a huge bubble game here uh, tonight. That's coming up in just about 15 minutes. I am looking very forward to that one. Uh, I would tell you about the University of Miami taking on Boston College down the road for me, but they are not a good team. Uh, They are just uh, not. What a difference a year makes. Uh, They are laying five and a half points, as you can see. They opened up as a four-point favorite, so somebody in the marketplace thinks they are worth uh, taking a flyer with. I have lost enough money on Jim Laranega. Uh, and O'Meara and company there that I uh, just refuse to play that game. However, the number one team in the country is very much alive here to continue to stay number one. Uh, Big 12 action with Houston. Um, looking, uh, in fact, uh, the problem with uh, Houston is that they can't stay healthy. And I do believe they have lost yet another role player on that team, another bench player. I mean, staying healthy right around this time of year Uh, is vital as you get ready for March Madness heading into conference tournaments. And and Houston 
If you guys watched that last game over the weekend against Oklahoma, that was very un-Houston-like. They still ended up winning the game. They still sit atop the Big 12, uh, and they are certainly in contention for the number one overall seed come the NCAA tournament, and obviously that has its perks, but my goodness, uh, they are losing guys left and right here, so they might be a little uh, shorthanded as uh, the latest is a freshman, uh, JoJo Tugler, who uh, Coach Sampson had said broke a bone in his right foot in that Oklahoma game. He had played in 28 games this season. He had made one start, but not that he's a huge uh, contributor, but when you play 28 games, uh, you are a guy that you are going to need depth in order to make a run at this in the postseason here in March Madness. And slowly but surely, uh, they are already down a couple of other bench uh, players, guys coming off there, some freshmen and some sophomores. Uh, so they are they can ill afford to lose anybody else. Uh, as you keep losing reserves, it's going to make it uh, even more important that the starters, and listen, they've got some of the best in the country here, which is why they are the number one team. But you don't want to have to rely on them to win games like this against UCF. You should be able to win this game against the uh, Central Florida Knights here, especially given the fact that the Knights are three and seven against ranked teams this season. Oh, yeah. And uh, three of those, uh, all three of those wins, in fact, um, came at home. So they did beat Kansas on their own home court earlier this year, uh, but they are not in the Houston Cougars, uh, not even remotely close in their uh, ballpark. So uh, this is a game at seven o'clock Eastern time tonight. We are certainly going to be keeping an eye on to see what's what do we get out of them? And don't forget, too, we also have more bubble situations happening here tonight. Big Ten action with Michigan State and Northwestern. Another game we are going to be very interested to see what happens here is Michigan State is just, I mean, the last couple of games have been absolutely brutal. Losing to Ohio State, losing to Purdue. Uh, just not good right now for Coach Izzo in Michigan State, but they are at home, and they'll have a chance to get back in the win column against Northwestern here. Uh, we also have uh, number four, Tennessee, taking on number 17, South Carolina tonight. A huge battle in the SEC. Now, who'd have thunk it at this particular point that we would be having a game here tonight that pretty much uh, is going to solidify who the number one seed is in the SEC tournament, which, of course, is a monster uh, tournament here. And the Volunteer uh, uh, Tennessee enters this game, I think, with a one-game lead over South Carolina. South Carolina, 25-4 and four on the season, 12-4 and four in the SEC. They are, um, I mean, just unbelievable story. Nobody had South Carolina being a top 20, 25 team this season. And yet they continue to go out there and prove that they are for real right now. And right now it's a big, uh, it's well, with Alabama losing again last night on the road, uh, it's really up to Tennessee and to South Carolina here. They are at the top of the leaderboard in the standings. Uh, Tennessee certainly uh, could wrap it up here tonight with a win here and be that number one seed, which would be great. But if uh, if South Carolina has uh, proven anything, it's that they cannot be slept on here. This is a good team that doesn't get enough credit. And we'll see if Tennessee can go on the road like they did against Alabama and win another game. And of course, uh, everyone's other favorite number one team in the country taking on the number eight team in the country, that being UConn, taking on Marquette coming up here tonight. 8.30, I believe, is the tip for this one here. And UConn, what else can they do? They just keep rolling and rolling and rolling. This is one of the best teams in the country. This is a team that is going to have a chance to do something that we have not seen in since the early 2000s, and that is a possible repeat national champion. Hasn't happened since the early 2000s with the University of Florida, and 
uh, good old Coach Donovan there. But they are alive for this. The other problem that we have in this game, though, uh, as you saw the market there, five and a half, six is what Marquette at home will be getting. They are not uh, going to have the services of the Big East Player of the Year there, Tyler Kolick. Uh, unfortunately for them, they are hoping to be able to get him back for the Big East uh, Conference uh, tournament coming up, and then, of course, March Madness. But the the other thing to keep in mind is number two, UConn. There is absolutely really nothing for them to gain in this game. Uh, they've already taken down the number one seed for the upcoming Big East tournament. Uh, they really, if push comes to shove here, there's really no reason for them to go all out here and risk, uh, you know, life and limb to try and beat Marquette in this matchup. Marquette almost took down Creighton, uh, but they were down two players in that game and still gave Creighton all they could uh, handle. I don't expect Marquette to roll over in this game at all, and I also wouldn't be shocked if Marquette, even without Kolick, somehow figures out a way to win this game. So we got a lot of great top 25 games getting ready to go. We got conference tournaments also underway and getting ready to start. We got much more to get to as Game Time Decisions continues here on The Grid. on the road in college basketball is an absolute landmine. I would not do it. I won't do it the rest of the year. I'm done doing that because it just consistently loses. I mean, three possessions in a nine-point game in which the opposition now is the clock, not the actual team you're facing, right? Right, right. And, and these guys are taking up shots. I, I mean, it's just like, that's why it's the NBA. In-game live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. Athletes in Canada, Wayne Gretzky, Connor McDavid, no longer can be part of these sports betting ads. Now, what's interesting is there is technically a carve out that will still let these athletes and celebrities appear in sportsbook ads, but it's only if those ads are slanted toward responsible gaming. So you could still have a Connor McDavid saying, hey, bet responsibly on TV in Ontario. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. The guy just made himself a whole lot of money, did he not? By uh, by now holding the record for the fastest 40-yard dash. But if it's one thing we know is that doesn't translate into quality football players in the NFL. So uh, somebody will uh, somebody will bite and overdraft him because he simply uh, ran faster than everyone else. It's just rinse and repeat. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid.
All right, welcome back in. It is game time decisions here on the Sports Grid Network. I'm Joe Ranieri. A very happy Wednesday to you as the madness ha- is off and running. It has begun conference tournament time here. Still got a couple of uh, games left for uh, much of the Power Five conferences to finish out the regular season this week. Uh, and then, of course, next week, their conference tournaments will be off and running. And joining us now is our good friend Mark Zeno here, who loves the madness. He looks forward to this time of year each and every year uh, because it uh, it truly is that. It's a love-hate relationship with March Madness here, uh, Zin. And tonight is no different when we look at the schedule and the kinds of games that we've got, both conference tournaments and the end of the uh, regular season. But... Uh, tell me what we're going to be doing here with Iowa tonight, because uh, I think you have some interesting numbers and stats here that the viewers uh, will find helpful here when looking to bet this game tonight. Yeah, well, uh, let's just start out by saying March Madness is the only thing as crazy as my personal life these days. So uh, I'm looking yes. for a little bit of a, you know, uh, settling in when it comes to <laughs> madness on TV as opposed to the madness that goes on in my house. Mm-hmm. Nonetheless, yes, yeah. I drove. We will digress here to Iowa State <laughs> and BYU tonight. Uh, Big 12 tilt here in Ames. Look, Cyclones, one of the best cover teams in the country, Joe. 28 against a number all season long. But I'm going to focus on the first half for a few reasons. One, it's senior night, right? Final home game of the season for Iowa State. A lot of energy in the building. You know, I expect a fast start for the Cyclones. Shouldn't be too hard. Moreover, there is a chance, though, that they could steal the number one seed in the Big 12. They need to win their final two games. Houston needs to lose one, and they'll steal the regular season Big 12 title. So there's plenty of motivation here. But the biggest reason is the first point, first half point differential at home, which for Iowa State, plus 15.4. That's the second best number in America, too, aforementioned Houston. But still, scoring 15.4 points more in the first half than your opponent is pretty good. They average just over 40, and they give up just over 25. So uh, this is also a team that's shooting 49% from the field at home this year. BYU struggled away from Provo, Joe, 2-6 and six against the spread, and their last five games, they're giving up 41.8 points in the first half, and opponents are shooting 48% here. So the numbers are really favorable for me here. Cyclones 17-0 straight up at home this year, 14-3 and three against the number, full game. Going to get it done here in the first half. I'll lay the three and a half. All right. You're going to lay the uh, three and a half to get them done there. Uh, And I don't blame you, right? Because BYU, it's going to be bombs away. We know that from them, right? And do we really, if they start falling late, you know, they can make up any difference they want there. And it's not like Iowa State is a tremendous uh, three-point defensive team here. They've been good at home. I'm with you, but I don't want anything to do with a full game and that many uh, points. So I'm with you there. I love the first half uh, look in that one. Uh, You're also going to go to uh, the Atlantic 10, I believe, here and look at the uh, this Richmond team, right? Taking on St. Joe's, who also has never met a three point shot. They don't like to take Uh, something's got to give here. Who are you looking at in this one? Well, kind of the same system that I'm using here. Um, One more win for the Spiders. Locks up the A-10 regular season title for them. Final home game, senior night again. These are big emotional moments for young kids, Joe. So these games matter. But Richmond, 14-1 and straight up at home this season. 11-4 and against the spread. Also 14-2 and in conference play. And 12-4 and against the number. But again, what stands out here is that point differential in the first half at home. Plus 9.4. That's 25th in America in first half point differential on their home floor here. Um, they averaged, they scored 37 points in the first half, allowed a little bit of over 27 and a half. Um, St. Joseph's here, not bad in the first half. They scored 35, but they also allowed 33 here. And over the last five games, Richmond is averaging 37.4 points in the first half. The Hawks scoring just 34, uh, and they're allowing opponents to shoot 39, or I'm sorry, they're shooting 39.6% from the field. The Hawks are. So we, we get a, a good defense here with the Spiders at home. They're only giving up 63.2 points per game. Um, Hawks are just three and eight straight up on the road this season. I think the motivation again there for the Spiders from the start of this thing. We get a quick, fast start and a short number, a favorable number at three. Keep the push in our back pocket if we need it, uh, if they're only up by three at the end of the first half. But I'll use the same system with Richmond uh, and play them in the first half. I like the way you're going with that one also. Let me ask you, because we do have, uh, ironically enough, two 
uh, top 25 matchups here uh, head-to-head, one of them in the SEC with Tennessee taking on South Carolina. I mean, listen, did you have South Carolina as a top 25 team this year? I mean, they're coming in at, what, number 17 now. They're taking on Tennessee, who I believe, uh, if they win this game on the road here tonight, they can probably lock up the number one seed, but... I mean, South Carolina's a day. Keep waiting for the wheels to fall off, and it doesn't fall off here with them. It's kind of unbelievable the job they've done here. Yeah, I mean, look, is South Carolina really one of the top 25 teams in the nation? No. They're what, what, what you and I would call where we grew up, a little fugazi, as we say. Mm. Uh, they are not a team that I would consider one of the best 25 teams in the country. Tennessee 21 and 3 is a favorite straight up this year, but just 13 and 11 against the number and 4 and 6 ATS on the road so there might be some consternation here Gamecocks have been one of the best cover teams in the country 20 and 8 overall 11 and 2 as an underdog however the volunteers have covered 8 of 10 and are 4 and 1 against the spread against South Carolina over the last three years I think Tennessee is a markedly better team here are they going to lose to South Carolina twice like a revenge spot here for Tennessee remember South Carolina walked into Tennessee earlier this year in Knoxville and beat the volunteers so I'm sure Tennessee, even though it feels like a little bit maybe of a letdown spot for them after that big win on the road over Alabama, but I don't think South Carolina is in that same category here. Uh, I'm not going to have a play on this game, but I definitely lean Vols here minus the points. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a uh, – I mean, can they do it again? The tough ask. you got to go on the road in Tuscaloosa. Now you got to go on a road to Columbia. It, it's not, uh, not an easy trip here for Tennessee, the number four team in the country. Uh, All right, let's switch to the uh, NBA here tonight because we have some very intriguing spots here. And we'll start with the late night uh, game between the Golden State Warriors who uh, are trying to do anything. I I think a significant amount of mushrooms uh, is what the cure was to forget that uh, whooping they took against the Celtics the other day. So they'll get a little revenge tonight. They get to go home uh, and uh, relax a little bit and take on the Bucks team that may or may to have Giannis here. Does it matter? Um, well, look, it, it matters. Giannis certainly helps. I'd rather play with Giannis than without. But I'm going to make a little bit of a contrarian play here. Uh, and we've seen this sort of trend come in since the All-Star break that all these unders are coming into play here. Joe, the Bucks have gone under in 10 straight. Warriors have gone under in 7 straight. Now, the total in this game here that we're looking at, I got it at 227 and a half. That's 14 points lower than when these two teams met the first time around in a game Mm. that Steph Curry didn't even play in. Since Thanksgiving, the Warriors have only had four totals lower than this. Three of them were against the Grizzlies twice and the Trailblazers, both of those teams, bottom five in offensive efficiency. And the last one was a week or two ago against the Knicks, who were banged up, but they're also a top 10 defensive team, so we understand why that total was so low. I think the regression is coming here. I know Giannis not playing is a concern, but if he doesn't play, like basically with this total here, where it is at 227, you're all, are we telling me that the Bucks can't get to around 110, 112, you know, with, with Dame Lillard in the lineup and that's it? Like, is that – he did – he kind of dragged worse players in Portland to 115 points a game. So I, I don't think that uh, – this is that hard of a stretch for them. Bucks have only seen nine totals lower than this number all season, and they were either all against high-level defensive teams like Minnesota, Miami, and the Clippers, or against really poor offensive teams like the Hornets, Bulls, and Grizzlies. I think both of these teams are comparable where they are right now, both offensively and defensively. But let's buck the trend here. Get some scoring here and go over this 227 and a half. All right, looking uh, to go up and over on this one. Uh, the question you got to ask is, is why, though? Have you noticed – a lot less free throws, a lot less whistles in games here uh, down the stretch since the All-Star break uh, with them. You know, they're they're kind of swallowing the whistle a little bit more as we wind down with the last, what, dozen and a half games or so. Uh, and it feels like uh, not everything is life and death with these refs now. So they're letting them do a lot more hand check. They're getting away with a lot more than I think they did uh, prior to the All-Star break here. I mean, I think there's also a component of this that for a lot of these teams, especially the teams that are star-laden, Joe, they don't care at this point what their record mm. is. Like Anthony Davis said it the other night after the Warriors beat uh, – I think they beat the Bucs. Or, or, or the Lakers beat uh, – mm-hmm. I'm sorry, Lakers beat – who was it? The Clippers? Okay, I can't remember. Okay, see, thank you. Yeah. My mind yeah. is uh, slipping here. But, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. said, 
We don't care what our record is. We don't care. Like, the, the Clippers right now, look at them. Like, they got to this juggernaut pace where they got the top of the West. And ever since, right before the All-Star break, it's been... They don't care. Yep. Like, they don't care about what place they come in. They care about what they're going to do once the playoffs start. So these guys are kind of just coasting right now and not really trying. Look, you have some of these young teams like OKC, like Houston, like Minnesota, you know, even teams like, you know, in, in the East, the Cavaliers, maybe the Knicks mm. to a certain extent, um, that trying and, and trying to win games and increase their position because they need it. Right, they have to be in a favorable position if they want to knock off one of the these star laden teams that are that that are heavy favorites to to make deep playoff runs. I, I think for them it matters, but for most of the league, when it's not a handful of five or six or seven teams, everybody else is either really bad or just sort of coasting to the finish here. It's been a uh, remarkable turnaround of uh, scoring in uh, total, certainly over the last month or so. We'll see. Uh, how much longer that continues, and is that a sign of things uh, to come uh, playoff time? We'll have to wait and see, but no doubt here, going bucking that trend, going up and over with the Bucks in Golden State. Zinn, we appreciate the time as uh, always there, my man. Little studying force here, right? Just a little, little, you know, kumbaya here, my man. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. CT Bets stepping up next here, game time. on the road in college basketball is an absolute landmine. I would not do it. I won't do it the rest of the year. I'm done doing that because it just consistently loses. I mean, three possessions in a nine-point game in which the opposition now is the clock, not the actual team you're facing, right? Right, right. And, and these guys are taking up shots. I, I mean, it's just like, that's why it's the NBA. In-game live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. Athletes in Canada, Wayne Gretzky, Connor McDavid, no longer can be part of these sports betting ads. Now what's interesting is there is technically a carve out that will still let these athletes and celebrities appear in sportsbook ads, but it's only if those ads are slanted toward responsible games. So you could still have a Connor McDavid saying, hey, bet responsibly on TV in Ontario. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. The guy just made himself a whole lot of money, did he not? By uh, by now holding the record for the fastest 40-yard dash. But if it's one thing we know is that doesn't translate into quality football players in the NFL. So uh, somebody will uh, somebody will bite and overdraft him because he simply uh, ran faster than everyone else. It's just rinse and repeat. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid.
All right, welcome back in Game Time Decisions here on the Sports Grid Network. I'm Joe Ranieri. Certainly appreciate you hanging out here as we are getting ready for a uh, monster week of uh, madness here. And uh, it continues tonight in college hoops. And nobody better to be able to lay it all out for us uh, because this man loves his madness. Uh, and it doesn't get any more maddening than what we're going to have to deal with here. As Chris Thurston, CT bets up and in here. Uh, it is always a pleasure to see you, CT. Thank you for uh, for swinging by here. We're going to start with uh, the Boca Raton Owls. Oh, I mean, the FAU Owls here uh, tonight, I believe, taking on North Texas, it is. So an interesting battle here tonight. How are you looking at this game? Yeah, Joe, AAC game, and it's in the Super Pit, right? It's now that tonight down in Denton, Texas. Mm. And uh, North Texas, as you know, Joe, it's known for being strong uh, on the defensive side of, of the ball. And once again, this year, they're playing really good defense. And they're only allowing 62 points uh, per game this year against them. But now they have to face a high-powered Owls offense tonight, right? And the Owls, they returned almost everyone from last year's Final Four uh, team they haven't been the same as we're we were used to seeing last march but they still come in scoring about 82 points per game the defense has kind of been a little bit of a mess uh, especially on the road and i know north texas they, they've won their last two i do think this line is a little short here tonight joe and i like like i said fau really hasn't been great on the road defensively but i think they get the job done tonight they have more scores than north texas mean green tend to have some scoring droughts uh and no, they haven't had the last two games here, but they go into those droughts and it's really tough for them to score. Look for FAU to get the season sweep here. So I, I like FAU and I played on a minus two. Yeah, certainly a uh, small enough number to be able to uh, to handle and carry there with uh, FAU ramping up for another uh, run at a possible uh, final four. They certainly have the experience uh, there with that team there, been there and done that. Uh, now we've got to talk about experience. Uh, UConn here, the number two team in the country, taking on uh, a no, what, number eight Marquette here. Still no Colic. Uh, obviously not great for Marquette. But really, my, my question here is, what does UConn gain in this game? Is it really a do-or-die spot for them? Or is this all about Marquette leaving it all out on the court tonight? Well, I feel I feel like hopefully you're gonna agree with me, Joe, because I feel like I've been taking crazy pills all day today because I've been liking Marquette <laughs> and I really want to get to the window on them. And I'm like, am, am I that insane? But I mean, yeah, I don't think it's that crazy because, like you said, what is UConn going to play for tonight? They they've already locked up the one seed for the Big East uh, tournament. They've won the regular season. They as they smashed Seton Hall this past Sunday. I mean, I don't think that Coach Coach Hurley like wants to come into this game thinking with the mentality that like, all right, you know, we can let's lose. But I also can't see him caring too much if they do lose the game, right? It might be the mentality of, hey, you know, let's get in, let's get out, let's get home, uh, and, and let's make sure we're healthy out of this game uh, before we start the tournament run, before we try to win the Big East tournament and then go on to try and win back to back. Um, like I, I really think like Marquette's going to get up for tonight's game. They, they did a great job. Yeah. Look what they did this past Saturday. They did an unbelievable job in the game versus Creighton without Pollock and Iggy, their big man. Uh, they yeah. were down three with 10 minutes to go. Eventually Creighton, I know that they ran away with it, but, um, a lot of credit to Shaka's bunch for, for hanging around the golden Eagles, Joe, as you know, they still have plenty of scores without, uh, without Pollock, right. Might've heard of Cam Jones, uh, he might not be as creative as, as Kolick, but he could flat out play the game. Home court, senior night. You know Shaka's going to want revenge from when UConn smashed them uh, a little bit ago. I like the Golden Eagles tonight. I haven't got to the window, but, man, that's the way I lean, and I won't be surprised to see him win the game, Joe. Uh, listen, I have no idea what UConn – they have nothing to gain in this game. This is not a bubble team. This is not a make-or-break situation. This is simply – all right, we got right. Marquette we're on the road. And how many times have we seen Shaka Smart teams in this spot as a home dog with everything on the line and nobody betting them, and uh, then you're trying to kick yourself for not betting them? And I think the under correlates 
also to uh, to a bet on Marquette. So uh, I'm with you. Colic or no colic, I think uh, this game clearly means more to one side uh, than the other. But now you got to put on your uh, your future hat here, man, and you've got to tell me because uh, you were all over it a year ago as well. I believe uh, UConn was in your uh, thoughts there right around this time last year at a pretty good price. So looking ahead, Final Four, championship. Give me some names. Give me some teams you're looking at here in the futures market. So, Joe, I've been looking forward to uh, kind of talking to you about the, the March Madness Tournament and the national champion because there's a team that you and I have talked about together all year. And we have a mutual friend who, uh, who was pretty dialed <laughs> into college basketball that told us that this team flat out stinks, okay? And I think they have a really, really good shot to make a run here, and that's UNC, North Carolina, the Tar Heels, okay? Now, <laughs> I'm looking at the odds right now. I'm sure Patrick uh, could pull them up for us here, but I'm looking at DraftKings yep. right now, 21 20, 20 to one right now on UNC mm -hmm. uh, with RJ Davis and Armando Bangkok, two guys that have been there before Hubert Davis, a coach has been there before RJ Davis looks yep. like a man possessed right now, Joe. And let's not forget. I know it was earlier in the season, but let's go back to November. I think it was November end of November. I know it was early, but they put up pretty – I mean, they won eight by eight or nine versus that Tennessee team. That was a signature win. R.J. Davis yeah. went off. He had close to 30 there, okay? They're, they're top, pretty much top 25 in both offensive and, and defensive efficiency. I think they're 26 in offensive uh, efficiency. They're six in defensive efficiency. But, Joe, talk to me. Am I taking crazy pills again that, that I think mm -hmm. that this UNC team could, could win it all? You, you you know, we've already both uh, played future tickets on North Carolina because I don't know how you don't. They've got, uh, honestly, one of the, a trio of the best guards in the country here. They got Baycott. They got Davis. They've got everything you need to make a run out of it. Oh, yeah, by the way, uh, Duke beating them is is not a possibility because uh, I think Duke is, uh, is finished here come shortly, especially yeah. uh, they're going to play here in a game uh, coming up this weekend. Uh, which, uh, unfortunately, is not going to end well for Duke either. Uh, but as good as they are, and, and, and I'm with you, we love North Carolina. I, we'd be totally remiss if I didn't ask you about your Baylor Bears, uh, who I don't, every time I keep trying to move away from them, I, I'm, you can't. There's absolutely no way. We cashed tickets on the last couple of games. Nobody else wanted to bet them. I, I don't think, you know, like what? They don't expect to beat Kansas? Are you kidding? The, and I'm with you, Joe, right? So the problem is that they've been getting off to such sluggish starts, right? Uh, we didn't see it in the Kansas game so much this past Saturday, uh, but we saw it Monday night. And I know that was that was a quick turnaround, but they get down so quickly in the first half. I mean, they did it a couple weeks ago when I was at the Houston game. I was there live in person. All of a sudden, they're down 16 at half, and Drew mm. has to come into the locker room and make all these second half adjustments and they have to shoot their way back into the game, which it's not a problem for them because they shoot the three point ball so well. So I always say that the three point shot is like putting makeup on a pimply face. It could, <laughs> it could cover up a lot of other things that you do wrong. Right. And that's what Baylor is able to do with their coach uh, and their three point shot. They are very young. But the ceiling is really high. I really do think that Baylor has a shot to make the biggest run from all the teams in the Big 12. Uh, the, the transfers, they've been great, right? The, the ball handler uh, and then none, the transfer from, uh, from VCU. Yep. I mean, the two of them have been absolutely lights out. And then you have the freshmen, Missy and Walter, right? Missy's got to grow up really, really quick because – He's not he's not a shooter, as we know, but he has trouble. Mm. He gets a little I don't know if the, ner the word is nervous when he goes up to the to the rim, but he's he's still fragile. He's young. He needs those veterans to kind of get around him and kind of say, all right, this is March, man. We need you to. I know you're you're a freshman, but we need <laughs> you to act like a senior here. You're our, you're our guy. And they really need Langston Love back, Joe. He, he would have been yeah. probably, in my opinion, up for six man of the year in the Big 12. 
I have a ticket on them 54 to one uh, from before the season started. They're 30 to one now. I mean, I think they're at least a sweet 16 uh, team. I think they're going to be playing here in the second weekend at the very least. So I know everyone in a big 12 uh, tournament is going to come up. Everyone's going to be betting Houston. We know that, or they're going to fall in love with Iowa state uh, or even BYU for that matter, if they end up beating Iowa state uh, tonight, but you know, there they sit once again, kind of feels like uh, the big 12 tournament, a great peak cursor to March madness here. If Baylor can run the tables there. Well, Joe, right. I think Scott Drew always gets his team up to play in the mm-hmm. Big 12 tournament. That That's something that they, they want to do. Uh, they want to yep. win the Big 12 tournament. They've won the Big 12 regular season. But one of, or you remember Adam Flagler, one of his goals yep. was to win the Big 12 tournament. And that was a really, I thought they were going to put it together last year. And, and Iowa State ends up, you know, knocking them out again. They had a real trouble with Iowa State last year. But this year, yep. right? Joe, I keep going back to that Houston team. You brought them up. I, like, I just don't see it. I, I know they're they're very talented, and I know, like, they're the best defensive efficiency team in the country. But, man, they just had another big injury. I know he was a freshman. Yep. But Tugler just went down, okay? So that yep. means their bench went from being short, Joe, to about playing eight guys. Calvin Sampson played eight. So now he's got to play seven. So now you're yep. going to have to play Roberts and Francis close to the whole game while you have shed and crier who pretty much don't (laughs) come off the floor. Right. And Joe, if if shed and crier don't score double digits, I mean, how they win a game is, is beyond me. I I just don't see it here. They're not a flashy team and they play hard, but the problem is they play so hard that they ends up, they end up getting themselves into foul trouble, which what is it? You don't, if you don't have depth, Joe, the foul trouble gets you to even more trouble because you don't have anybody that could go in and play. So I yep. think Houston is in, in a world of trouble here. Injuries is a, uh, it's a plague that that's kind of ate Samson up the last few years. He's just not been very deep. I'm not seeing it, Joe. And I'm Purdue impressed me last night. That was a big time win. Okay. Hostile Huge. environment. Illinois is a good team. They impressed me, but I'm still just seeing Matt Painter paint in March. Yes. Well, if I can make the same argument for Rick Barnes in Tennessee tonight, yeah. it's great. Congratulations on your regular season, but you ain't getting my money uh, come tournament time <laughs> here because we've been down that road far too often. Uh, I thought the the come from behind win in both spots, though they lost, they came up short uh, to Houston, but. Uh, you got to love Coach Drew and the adjustments and the kids reacting to the adjustments and executing. Yep. Even though they're a little sluggish early, that's a mark of a championship team that can make the changes in game there. CT bets. Let's cash those tickets tonight, brother. We'll talk to you again next week. Game time decisions continues here on the. on the road in college basketball is an absolute landmine. I would not do it. I won't do it the rest of the year. I'm done doing that because it just consistently loses. I mean, three possessions in a nine-point game in which the opposition now is the clock, not the actual team you're facing, right? Right, right. And and these guys are taking up shots. I I mean, it's just like, that's why it's the NBA. In-game live, prime time, only on SportsGrid. Athletes in Canada, Wayne Gretzky, Connor McDavid, no longer can 
be part of these sports betting ads. Now, what's interesting is there is technically a carve out that will still let these athletes and celebrities appear in sportsbook ads, but it's only if those ads are slanted toward responsible games. So you could still have a Conor McDavid saying, hey, bet responsibly on TV in Ontario. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. 4.22, the fat man alive. The guy just made himself a whole lot of money, did he not? By uh, by now holding the record for the fastest 40-yard dash. But if it's one thing we know is that doesn't translate into quality football players in the NFL. So uh, somebody will uh, somebody will bite and overdraft him because he simply uh, ran faster than everyone else. It's just rinse and repeat. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh, tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. Welcome back in game time decisions here on the sports grid network as we look to close out this first hour getting ready here seven games in the association uh, tonight and I tell you it's uh, it's going to be a fun one here and a no better way to kick it off than what a same game parlay as our good friend Davis Maddock has one here in tonight's card and Davis what are you looking at? All right, guys, we are back for another same game parlay over on the FanDuel Sportsbook, continuing to focus on the NBA. We have the Sacramento Kings traveling to play at the Los Angeles Lakers. The Lakers in a good little run right now. Big win over the Oklahoma City Thunder. Really strong win against the Clippers as well last week. So we're going to take the Lakers minus three and a half here. The Kings going the wrong way. The Lakers going the right way. This is actually a huge game in terms of play-in seeding stuff for the Lakers. So I'm expecting them to go all out. We're also going to take the under on 238 and a half. I think this, is a, this will be a real Styles makes fights contest and I expect the Lakers defense to do quite well I think AD will be all over to Montez Sabonis there in the paint and then just to juice it up a little bit more we are going to tack on LeBron James to score 20 or more points in this game just kind of looking at the wing defenders for the Kings like do we really think Kevin Herter is going to do that good of a job on LeBron I personally do not this three leg same game parlay is going to give us plus 267 odds Lakers minus three and a half under 238 and LeBron James to score 20 or more points in this game. Good luck tonight, everybody. I appreciate it, Davis. And yes, it is a uh, big game here tonight out west uh, in the late slate there. Uh, 10 30 Eastern time tip between the Lakers and the Kings. But don't forget, you got OKC taking on Portland. You've got the Bulls taking on the Jazz. We got Grizzly 76ers, Clippers, Rockets, Cavs, Hawks, and of course, the red hot Orlando Magic taking on the dreadful Washington Wizards. We'll have much more on all of those games as we kick off another hour of Game Time Decisions coming your way next here on The Grid.
All right, welcome back in. It is game time decisions here on the Sports Grid Network. A very happy Wednesday to you now here. March 6th, and the madness is off and running, and it has been absolute madness already in the conference tournaments that are off and running. A lot of the mid-major uh, conferences, uh, the kind of win-or-go-home uh, conferences, uh, the only way to punch a ticket to the big dance is by winning your conference tournaments, and very rarely do we see in these mid-major conference tournaments Number one seeds, the chalk just kind of run the table here, and uh, it lives up to its craziness here, known as madness once again. We've seen it already with the Atlantic Sun Conference. Uh, it, we saw the number one seed, Eastern Kentucky, lose last night to Jacksonville. We've seen the number three seed also uh, go home. I mean, it has been a rough start here in March Madness if you have been playing uh, the chalk here. It has been absolutely crazy. And we, of course, have a few more games getting ready to go here. And of course, you don't have to look any further than the NEC tournament that kicks off here tonight, too, with our favorite, the Merrimack Warriors, taking on the Long Island Sharks. The NEC tournament, of course, uh, is interesting. And this is interesting from the standpoint of, if you remember, Merrimack won this division, this conference last year, but they were ineligible to actually go and represent in March Madness as we welcome in our radio audience here on this Wednesday. It is game time decisions on the Sports Grid Network. I'm Joe Ranieri, and we are talking madness, March Madness, and we've got a few more of the mid-major tournaments getting ready to uh, to start here tonight, including the NEC tournament, which just a year ago watched Merrimack, the Warriors, win it. But because they were ineligible uh, to go to the tournament because they made the transition from a Division II school to the big time, well, they unfortunately had to sit out a, uh, a year or so. But we saw fairly Dickinson take their place last year. And what happened uh, with that? Yeah. They ended up taking down Big Bad Purdue. So it, it certainly pays uh, to keep an eye on these mid-major tournaments and who eventually represents them heading to the big dance. And Merrimack, let's face it, they are the favorite. Uh, they should be the favorite here tonight in this one. I think it's going to be an awful lot of fun here uh, watching it unfold to see if they can actually take their rightful place like they should have last year in March Madness. And don't forget also Ohio Valley Conference Tournament getting ready to start here uh, tonight at the Ford Center. And you got Southern Indiana and Tennessee State going at it. Uh, and again, these are tournaments here that could be chalky, but I would doubt very much here. Tennessee State laying the three, three and a half here tonight. We've seen Southern Indiana with big losses already to Linwood and Southeast Missouri State. Not a good team. Some of these early conference games in like the Ohio Valley, probably uh, the favorite is a favorite for a reason, and I will leave it at that. Uh, but we've got plenty more action uh, still to go here tonight in college hoops. Let's not forget, we still have to finish the regular season in some of the uh, some of the big boy uh, conferences here, like the Big 12 going at it here tonight, the Big 10, the Big East. In fact, the Big East is already uh, off and running with a game here as uh, we've got Seton Hall taking on none other than Villanova. And they are just about, oh, five minutes left in the first half. And it has been a great back and forth there. Seton Hall... Uh, down a point to Nova, 19 to 18. And these are two teams clearly on the bubble here. So you got to be careful uh, with, uh, or they both those teams have to be careful because it just could be one of those situations where either you win and you make it to the tournament by winning the Big East, which of course I think the likes of Marquette and UConn and others will have something to say about it or you, you win your last two games here. So this is a big, big game right now with Seton Hall 
and Villanova. You've also got the University of Miami right now, 9-4 up uh, over Boston College. Both those teams very disappointed with how things have gone here so far this year. And we also have some action right now with uh, the Northeast Conference right now, where St. Francis PA knotted up uh, with Central Connecticut State right now, 7-7 in that one. And, oh, yeah, the other Big 12 teams that are going on tonight, TCU uh, sitting at 19-10 and 10 on the season, taking on West Virginia that has been just a hot mess all year long, just 9-20 and 20 on the season. They are at West Virginia. It is senior night. Uh, that is what we've got going on here with these last couple of games. Uh, Jamie Dixon and uh, TCU trying. Uh, to end on a positive note as they head into the Big 12 tournament. They're up right now 5 nothing over the Mountaineers, who really can't stop a nosebleed. And, oh, yeah, Tennessee, South Carolina, off and running SEC number one seed on the line here. Tennessee is off to a 6-2 start. And get ready. Other Northeast Conference tournament action. How about Wagner? Anybody have Wagner tonight? Coming in as the sixth seed. Taking on Sacred Heart. It's a 6-1 game early on. About five minutes to go in this one. And Sacred Heart got a lot of money early today over uh, Wagner. Kind of head-scratching here, as many people think. Wagner uh, actually in better form and in a ripe spot here in order to upset Sacred Heart here tonight. Oh, yeah, we talked about Fairleigh Dickinson, the other uh, side of the bracket of the Northeast Conference well, FDU may not have won the Northeast Conference last season, but it didn't matter because they still got a chance to go to the dance and use that time wisely by beating Purdue there. Well, now it's a 4-5 seed. LeMoyne, what? Yes, LeMoyne. Uh, that's correct, the LeMoyne Dolphins. Uh, if you're wondering where LeMoyne is, uh, join the club. Nobody has a clue as to where they are. No, I'm kidding. They're up uh, upstate uh, New York there, and I believe in that Syracuse area. Uh, LeMoyne is ready to roll. In fact, they're off to a 9 nothing start in that game. How about Rhode Island also trying to uh, finish off the season on a winning note here? They're knotted up with George Mason at six apiece. We told you about number one Houston. Uh, we talked to Chris Thurston earlier. They are injured. They are working with seven rotational players here uh, right now. And that is not good news for this Houston Cougars team sitting at the number one spot. And they're down early to UCF there, eight to two. And Davidson out in front of Loyola, Chicago right now as they have just tipped off early there. We'll have much more on the college basketball scoreboard as game time decisions continues here on the grid. on the road in college basketball is an absolute landmine. I would not do it. I won't do it the rest of the year. I'm done doing that because it just consistently loses. I mean, three possessions in a nine-point game in which the opposition now is the clock, not the actual team you're facing, right? Right, right. And, and these guys are taking up shots. I, I mean, it's just like, that's why it's the NBA. In-game live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. <laughs> Athletes in Canada, Wayne Gretzky, Connor McDavid, no longer can be part of these sports betting ads. Now what's interesting is there is technically a carve out that will still let these athletes and celebrities appear in sportsbook ads, but it's only if those ads are slanted toward responsible games. 
So you could still have a Connor McDavid saying, hey, bet responsibly on TV in Ontario. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. 4.22, the fan. Alive. The guy just made himself a whole lot of money, did he not? By uh, by now holding the record for the fastest 40 yard dash. But if it's one thing we know is that doesn't translate into quality football players in the NFL. So uh, somebody will uh, somebody will bite and overdraft him because he simply uh, ran faster than everyone else. It's just rinse and repeat. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start, so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. Welcome back in here. Game time decisions on this Wednesday. We are off and running, obviously, plenty of college basketball uh, upon us here. We are getting ready, I believe, uh, early start uh, in a couple of minutes here uh, in the NBA. Seven games on the slate there. We'll keep you posted with what's going on. But don't forget, we still have three NHL games on the slate and We've got a trade deadline uh, here, and uh, we already learned of a few moves earlier here today as we welcome in our good friend, George Kurtz, in the house. Uh, Nobody better to talk the NHL with. And Kurtz, let me ask you something here. Uh, The Florida Panthers, uh, they just keep adding weapons. Like, yeah, we good, Tarasek, great, come on in. We're good to go, pretty cheap price. Uh, I mean, my goodness, Uh, could they... Can they stop, please? I mean, the Panthers seem to be on a mission here to uh, to just basically house everybody here. Do you like the move? Oh, okay. Well, I, you know what? Here's the thing, uh, Dan, because obviously I was the same way when I read this headline earlier today because they're already the best team in the NHL by far. It's not even remotely close and yet here they are taking on uh you know they get a Tarasenko here has already had 17 goals this season with Ottawa and he was good with Ottawa but Ottawa had to get rid of him we get it um but my goodness here George Kurtz uh the rich keep getting richer here and just another weapon uh for the Florida Panthers uh to utilize in their quest for a uh, for not only maybe the President's Cup, but of course, a shot at getting to the NHL finals uh, once again. And uh, my goodness here, not a move a lot of people thought that they would see coming here, but certainly a move in which the uh, Florida Panthers uh, are more than happy to have options because they know better than anybody that depth is extremely important and you better have enough skilled players uh on a team if you are going to make a run at this and the panthers just added another one and by the way they're 21 4 and 2 in their last 27 games uh and there's not a whole lot of flaws on this roster but my goodness here uh kurtz i got kachuk i got verhage i got reinhardt and now they go out and get another guy that is no problem scoring that they can throw in uh, on any one of those lines. I, I, I mean, the rich got richer here with the Panthers. Absolutely. As you already mentioned, we're talking about a team that already might have been the best team in the NHL. 
All right, we knew they yep. would add something. Where were they going to go? They went offense, a little depth there. Tarasenko may not be the player he was two, three years ago, but we're talking a useful player here. You know, a 25, <laughs> 28 goal scorer over the course of a season here. So, yes, a nice player. I think most of the NHL were surprised at the cost. Not much conditional fourth and third, third round pick there. Uh, now, Tarasenko did have an NTC and no trade clause. He was pretty much able to decide where he wanted to go. I'm sure that kept the cost down somewhat. But he, uh, absolutely, Florida here. Florida's got the offense. They're a nasty team. They're no fun to play against. They have a good defense. It's all about Bobrovsky, and he's been great all season long. He continues to be that way. But right now, is the team to beat in the NHL. Yeah, no, it's not even close. I mean, Paul Maurice is going to have uh, options upon options there. Listen, I, I love what they're doing because there's a window of opportunity here, and they're taking full advantage of it, Doug Kurtz, getting exactly – uh, the kinds of pieces here that would certainly go to help another team. But at that price, like you said, you kind of can't pass it up here. Uh, only three games on the NHL here uh, tonight, in fact, and uh, one game already underway with the Sabres and uh, the Maple Leafs here. As we'll take a look here at uh, George Kurtz's uh, lineup card here on what he is looking at here tonight in uh, the NHL. And it's got to be Kurtz. Toronto and Buffalo, first thing I thought was over, but we ain't got a goal yet. So, uh, but I don't think it matters because I still think Buffalo and Toronto are probably going to get a few goals. But the Sabres have been pretty good in not allowing goals here over the last month. Yeah, they, they, the Sabres aren't a terrible team. All right, uh, they were, uh, they've been a disappointing team this season. But Uka Pekka Lukanen uh, has been really, he stabilized in, uh, in uh, the net for them. We thought it was going to be Devon Levy at the start of the season, the hot shot rookie from last year. That didn't pan out. So it took them a while to find their goaltender. But Pekka Lukanen has been that guy, solid goaltender. That being said, listen, our options are limited tonight. It's hard to bet an under with the Maple Leafs, and you have to think they're going to be a mm. little upset over how they played Monday against Boston. All right, so yeah, I'm on the Maple Leafs and the over tonight. I'm also on the Maple Leafs to win the game and an Austin Matthews anytime goal. Uh, he didn't score Monday, came close. All right, he had one right along the goal line here. Didn't didn't quite get in there, but uh, I'm on a couple of bets in this game. But I want goals. So, um, well, yeah, I mean, you like? Uh, I'm guessing you like the Maple Leafs in this one here too. And it is tough to back an over here with how good Buffalo has been in not allowing them. But I don't think I can say the same thing about Detroit and Colorado, who I believe over the la at least the last 10 games, Curtis, they averaged in three, four goals a game, averaging. Um, they have been really, really good here. And Colorado seems like it's that time of year. They're starting to kick it in here to, a, uh, to another gear, McKinnon and company. My goodness, uh, they are loaded again, Colorado. And they made a couple of big moves today, Joe. A couple yeah. of big trades today. They sent uh, Bowen Byram, uh, a really good defenseman. Has trouble staying healthy, but a really good defenseman. To Buffalo, by the way, for Casey Middlestad. Uh, Middlestad's a center here. They, uh, the Avs want Middlestad to replace Nazem Kadri. They've never been able to really mm. replace Kadri since he left via free agency before last season. So they're hoping Middlestad can be that second-line center. And I think he can here. And then to replace Byram, they trade for Sean Walker uh, from the Philadelphia Flyers here. Uh, Walker is a very good puck-moving defenseman. Not really great on the defensive side, but that's not what Colorado cares about. They like to have their defensemen, McCarr, Taves, uh, Gerard, and now Walker to carry that puck, get it out of the zone, get it to McKinnon, get it to Ranton, and away we go here. So a couple of big moves today for Colorado. A lot of what they've done here, and keep in mind, by the way, Colorado, these moves, they actually saved money on the cap. As Philadelphia mm. ain't Ryan Johansson's contract in that trade, his first round pick going to Philly here. So they could theoretically make another move before the deadline on Friday. Uh, I like Colorado tonight. I think it's going to be a higher scoring game. I think we'll see uh, uh, pucks go in the net tonight as well here. And I'm on the same thing Colorado to win and give me a Nathan McKinnon anytime goal. But you can play this in any one of a number of ways. You could say, hey, uh, Alex Lyon, the Detroit goaltender, going to give up more than three and a half goals. So Colorado to get four goals. Right. I don't mind that way. How about McKinnon at a power play point? You can go that direction here. McKinnon over a point and a half. And you notice how I keep going to McKinnon here. The guy who always, always gets at least one point at home. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, Patrick Kane also actually doing a pretty good job here uh, with Detroit. And they, too, uh, they've lost the last couple of games. They could be 
Could be interesting here tonight to see if they can get a couple of more goals. I don't think they're going to have to add a lot to get this thing up and over to six and a half, like you said here. Uh, but Patrick Kane getting a goal, maybe over two and a half shots, along with McKinnon. Uh, it seems like this is the one game on the card tonight we might be able to make uh, a few bucks on here and cash a few tickets, uh, especially correlated to that over. What are we going to do with uh, Ottawa now and Anaheim here tonight? We told you about, of course, Ottawa trading away and and i don't know kurtz uh more trades still to come here it's a tough spot here tonight for ottawa yeah jacob chicker is gonna be a god name you're gonna hear mentioned for ottawa a lot now in the next two days defenseman once again offensive defenseman here but that'll be the name you hear mentioned uh, possibly leaving ottawa over the next few days we'll see here no tarasenko tonight listen i'm taking the plus money in the ducks all right that's uh, i'm just taking mm. the plus money in the ducks here all right I'm, uh, I'm not, it's tough to bet ottawa uh i They've had problems in goal now because uh, Forsberg's hurt, Corpus Silo's ill. We'll see what we get there tonight here. Uh, I'm just taking the plus money. I'm not going to tell you I love it. Uh, I don't have any real reason for it. Give me plus 160 with the Anaheim Ducks. Trust it. It's hard to trust the Senators. Oh, it's uh, very hard to trust, especially on the road against Anaheim here tonight. So, George Kurtz, outstanding uh, stuff here. So, uh, we'll be rooting it in here tonight for you, man. We appreciate the time. Brady Cannon will step up next here on The Grid. points on the road in college basketball is an absolute landmine i would not do it i won't do it the rest of the year i'm done doing that because it just consistently loses i mean three possessions in a nine point game in which the opposition now is the clock not the actual team you're facing right right Right. And, and these guys are taking up shots. I, I mean, it's just like, that's why it's the NBA. In-game live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. Athletes in Canada, Wayne Gretzky, Connor McDavid, no longer can be part of the sports betting ads. Now, what's interesting is there is technically a carve-out that will still let these athletes and celebrities appear in sportsbook ads, but it's only if those ads are slanted toward responsible games. So you could still have a Conor McDavid saying, hey, bet responsibly on TV in Ontario. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. 4.22, the fastest man alive. The guy just made himself a whole lot of money, did he not? By, uh, by now holding the record for the fastest 40 yard dash. But if it's one thing we know is that doesn't translate into quality football players in the NFL. So uh, somebody will uh, somebody will bite and overdraft him because he simply uh, ran faster than everyone else. It's just rinse and repeat. The early line only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid.
All right, welcome back in. Game time decisions here on the Sports Grid Network on this uh, Wednesday. And you know what that means, in addition, of course, uh, to college basketball, NBA, NHL, baseball starting. Let us not forget about each and every Thursday. We get to start with a new PGA Tour event, and we got a good one coming up this weekend here, and nobody better to talk to about it. Then our good friend Brady Cannon, and uh, it is Bay Hill, Brady, on our minds here at the Arnold Palmer Invitational in Orlando. Uh, I never thought the uh, the uh, Cognizant Classic was going to end because it looked like it was going to rain <laughs> uh, forever. Uh, but a Oklahoma State alum takes it down there with Austin Eckroad, and I may be crazy but I think this could be back-to-back Oklahoma State alums winning golf tournaments here, Brady. Uh, kudos to Austin Necro, though, for getting it done last week. Hey, I like where you're going with that, but uh, Matthew Wolf is on the live tour. No, yeah, Victor Hovland, oh. right? <laughs> <laughs> well done. Touche. No. Yeah, very well done. No, no <laughs> doubt about it. I do, it. Think, uh, I do think, though, I mean – Horses for courses, right? This is, we, we talked last week about PGA National, the way that's set up, and it's set up for, for certainly certain styles of golfers here. Start with this course, and who are we talking about here? Whose game fits this golf course? It's actually a little bit similar to last week, Joe, mm. uh, in, in the sense that I think it's going to, you know, be a ball strikers course. It always has been. And I think it's going to continue to play that, that uh, play that way this week. Now, what you have is kind of a bigger version. You've got thicker rough. You've got bigger greens. You've got a longer course. It's a par 72 rather than a 71. Uh, you've got very thick rough here. We do have a little bit of moisture in the area. It looks like it's going to be on and off. So that'll probably make that thick rough even tougher. But you do have relatively narrow fairways like we had last week. I, I think the short game is mitigated a bit versus, you know, some other courses where it might be more important. I, I think this is so much about total driving. You got to hit it long and straight. Uh, it's about long iron play. Bay Hill, when you include the par three holes, has more holes or more approach shots of 200 yards or greater than any other course on the tour rotation. So long iron play, total driving, ball striking, uh, that is really going to be the first and foremost uh, formula, I believe, this week. And that, as you kind of allude to, that's right up Victor Hovland's alley. He's finished 10th here before. He's finished runner up here before. As far as the correlated courses I use this week, Joe, other courses that we see around the rotation that are heavy on ball striking, uh, Phoenix, TPC Scottsdale, Memorial Park in Houston, Southern Hills, where they had the PGA Championship in 22, Oak Hill, where they had the PGA Championship last year, Olympia Fields, which has held a couple of BMW championships, a part of the FedEx Cup uh, playoffs the last few years. What has Victor Hovland done at those courses? Well, he won at Olympia Fields last fall. He finished second mm. at Oak Hill as a part of the PGA. Um, he's finished 15th before in Houston. So, you know, the guy tends to show up when you get these types of courses that absolutely fit his game. And he's a guy I landed on my shortest shot this week at 17 to 1. Yeah, well, of course, there's always chalk in this one because we've got it is a shorter field with more of the bigger names. Of course, the Scotties are here and, uh, you know, Rory and, yeah, you know, we get all of that. But we've got four par fives. We've got a couple of really short par fours. And we have a tournament at least over the last four or five that maybe even single digits wins it, uh, which yeah. means current form, I guess, matters here in this tournament. Oh, yeah. You know, I think current form is always a factor. As far as course form and course history, Bay Hill has one of the strongest mm. uh, strangleholds on course history. I mean, Tiger Woods won here eight times, multiple winners. <laughs> Scotty Scheffler has won here. I think it was third that he finished last year. Mm -hmm. Rory has done exceptionally well here over the years. You're talking like Augusta National, the Sony Open, Bay Hill, Colonial. You know, there, there's a handful of tracks on tour where guys that uh, play well tend to do so year in and year out. And, you know, my next guy on the board was Sam Burns at 26 mm. to one. 
He doesn't have, he doesn't fit the profile or have the course form like a Hovland and some of my other plays do. But you talk about current form. I can't ignore the fact that he's finished top 10 in four straight events, four weeks in a row yeah. coming into this event. The last one being the Genesis Invitational where he finished 10th. And he did take ninth here at Bay Hill in 2022. Um, he's finished third and sixth at Phoenix. Again, a correlated course of mine, a couple of seventh place finishes at Houston. So Sam Burns, and, and by the way, with Burnsy, one of the best putters on Bermuda grass in the field as well. Mm. Yeah, well, you know, I see on that list you have, we talked about him uh, last couple of weeks too, was Matty Fitzpatrick here, who, if I'm not mistaken, four top tens, uh, six top 25s, nine career starts here. Uh, I think even as an amateur won, uh, won a tournament here. So likes the greens, likes the golf course, familiar, pretty good price too, it looks like. Yeah, not too bad. You know, I've seen him being bet down to as low as 24. I was able to get him Oof. pretty early in the week at 32. But you're talking a U.S. Open winner here, right? That that equals yeah. ball striker in my book. And, and you talk about what he's done at not only Bay Hill, but the correlated courses. Incredibly strong. 14th and 9th here at Bay Hill. 15th and 10th in Phoenix. 13th and 10th at Congaree in South Carolina, 5th at Southern Hills for the PGA, 6th and runner-up at Olympia Field. So, I, I mean, this guy just checks a lot of boxes. Uh, I, I like Fitzpatrick this week. I also took uh, another guy at similar odds, Cam Young, who really mm. is pretty similar to Victor Hovland. Big boy hitter off the off the tee with the driver in his hands. He can strike the long irons. You know, absolute ball striker is Cam Young. And he comes in with good current form. An eighth place in Phoenix, again, a correlated course. Finished fourth last week uh, at the Cognizant. So I, I think Cam Young is in play this week. Uh, and I've seen his numbers stay pretty steady, you know, in the high mm. 20s to low 30s. So I think there's still some good opportunity out there on Cam Young. Well, you, you talked about him last week. I think he had a, a top five finish at, at PJ National. He was 16th at Riviera. I believe he was eighth at Scottsdale. I mean, yeah. the game is uh, the game is there for him, and that is a uh, pretty good price. I see uh, you have a couple of the old guys on the uh, on the card as well there, and certainly uh, two dudes very familiar with uh, Bay Hill in Fleetwood and uh, Keegan Bradley here. Pretty good prices, too, where knowledge matters. Absolutely. Uh, and I should preface all of this by saying, Joe, not only did I play all of these guys outright, but I played them for a top 20 finish as well. That's just mm. a part of my routine week in and week out. And I will risk less on the outright wager than I do on the top 20 finish. I'll, I'll, I'll you know, bump that up quite a bit on the top 20 finish. Um, you figure if they are knocking on the door for a top 20 finish, they're probably at some point in contention to win the golf tournament. And Tommy Fleetwood has three top 10s here. Uh, Keegan Bradley has four top 10s, including mm. a runner up. And, you know, both of these guys, absolutely, especially Bradley, his career signature has been based on total driving and long iron play and ball striking. Tommy Fleetwood's also another guy that plays difficult golf courses really, really well. One of the best guys in this field that plays tough golf courses well. You've seen him do it at Shinnecock. He was fourth at Southern Hills for the PGA a couple of years ago. Um, you know, and Keegan Bradley is really kind of my flyer here. The, the, the other five guys, I think, have an absolute legitimate shot to win this. Keegan Bradley, just a little bit of a flyer. Like you say, an older guy who does have tremendous experience here. And, you know, in the last couple of years, his putting has improved too. So you never know. Um, he, if he finishes top 20, hey, I'll cash that ticket and we'll be happy. And again, like I say, if you're finishing top 20, there's probably at some point you've got a shot to win it. So I got to uh, ask you this. We have uh, Cameron Young, Fitzpatrick. They're, they're all in that nice price range there of the, you know, 25 to 35, somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, I think Jason Day is somewhere also in there with great course history. But it, it's like we almost forgot again. Like, what, should we be looking at Willie Z here, who we all think is he's close and he's kind of in that uh, that same price range? There's no doubt about it. And it's the old saying, you can't bet them all, right? 
Um, Not right. No, I mean, the last time we saw Willie Z, he was right there up until the very end and just got bulldozed by a, a guy that was on an absolute heater in Hideki Matsuyama. Yeah. Um, I, I, it, it's it, it, Zalatoris, I think, can probably show up any week, any time and win. I, I just didn't, you know, I, I kind of went Hovland rather than Willie Z. I kind of went Cam sure. Young rather than Willie Z. You know, and he hasn't been around this track a whole lot either. Um, I did uh, talk with one bookmaker from the Mandalay Bay here in Las Vegas. In fact, my article is up at PGATour.com under the heading Golf Bet. It's called The Prop Farm. And we talked to a lot of bookmakers about what kind of action they're seeing pouring in uh, week to week on each tournament. And he said yep. he's taken some sharp action on Willie Z to finish top 20. So maybe betters Ooh. aren't real aggressive to bet him to win. But uh, he agreed with that. In fact, he threw out his own opinion and said, I think that's a, a pretty good bet I might make myself. Willie Z to finish top 20. I I, uh, I love it here. You got some uh, some head-to-head bets over there, too, as well. We'll throw up on the uh, screen. I mean, Adam Scott doesn't get any more uh, familiar uh, with Bay Hill there. And that's the interesting part here, Brady. We've got uh, a, a smaller field, but a whole lot of experience. It should be a great one. Good luck with those picks, Brady. We'll talk to you again later this week here. GTD continues on the grid. on the road in college basketball is an absolute landmine. I would not do it. I won't do it the rest of the year. I'm done doing that because it just consistently loses. I mean, three possessions in a nine-point game in which the opposition now is the clock, not the actual team you're facing, right? Right, right. And and these guys are taking up shots. I I mean, it's just like, that's why it's the NBA. In-game live, prime time, only on SportsGrid. Athletes in Canada, Wayne Gretzky, Connor McDavid, no longer can be part of these sports betting ads. Now what's interesting is there is technically a carve out that will still let these athletes and celebrities appear in sportsbook ads, but it's only if those ads are slanted toward responsible games. So you could still have a Connor McDavid saying, hey, bet responsibly on TV in Ontario. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. The guy just made himself a whole lot of money, did he not? By uh, by now holding the record for the fastest 40 yard dash. But if it's one thing we know is that doesn't translate into quality football players in the NFL. So uh, somebody will uh, somebody will bite and overdraft him because he simply uh, ran faster than everyone else. It's just rinse and repeat. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid.
All right, welcome back in Game Time Decisions here on the Sports Grid Network. I'm Joe Ranieri, and uh, much going on here tonight. And don't worry, you're in good hands coming up top of the hour. Scotty Wetzel take over in game live, and you will be prime time here on a loaded slate here. Certainly, college basketball, the madness has begun, but uh, we got a pretty decent NBA slate of games as well here scotty early on i'm seeing orlando down i hope you're sitting down the magic are just sticking it to the orlando magic there i mean the wizards rather sticking it to the magic 39 23 early here in the second but we do have uh, a couple other games uh, just underway Cavs, hawks uh clippers rockets as well as the grizzlies and the 76ers uh and i think the late slate of games there's some money to be uh, made here, and I'll start with Utah taking on uh, the Bulls, who what a what a comeback the other night against Sacramento. Was down 22 at one point, Scotty, and they came back and just hosed them in the fourth quarter. Do they have enough in the tank uh, tonight, you think, to do that uh, again here? I think they do. You know, it's funny. And I had uh, Sacramento, too, the other night. Yeah. One of those games where you kind of turn it off, you lose attention. All right, they're up 15 20. Mm-hmm. It's the dopey Bulls, right? It's going to be a winner. Yep. And then you look at the final score and you're like, you got to be kidding me. They lost. Forget about not yep. even covering, right? So, yeah, I'm going to hop on. And I generally like going against teams that have those big comebacks because they're so giddy about winning. But. Bulls are actually playing halfway decent. For whatever reason, all season long, Joe, they play better on the road than they do at home. They're 6-5 and five their last 11. Nothing great, but still, that, that's halfway decent. 4-2, and two, last 6 on the road. Utah's in a whole lot of trouble. They did win their last game, but that was against Washington. But otherwise, they've lost 9 of 11. No Laurie Markenden, supposedly, tonight. So, you know what? Bulls are a favorite. Drop down to three and a half, four, depending on uh, you know where and when you do your shopping. But I, I got a feeling the Bulls are going to win on the road. So yeah, I do like Chicago in this game, laying a small price in in Utah. All right, hell of a win for uh, the Lakers uh, a couple of games ago. There, nobody uh, they flipped. They were a favorite. Then all of a sudden they were the dog taking on OKC. Well, they handled business. Uh, now they've got Sacramento, who just we just said was just threw up all over themselves in the fourth quarter against the Bulls a couple of nights ago. Um, I believe De'Aaron Fox is a go. I'm seeing him active now. And LeBron, of course, is questionable. But when is he? Uh, Who would you lean towards in this one? Like Sacramento. Uh, You know what? The Kings, believe it or not, have kind of owned this series. Uh, They are 6-1. and against the Lakers last seven games, including 2-0 and this year, including 3-0 and in Los Angeles. So it's not even like you could say, well, it's in L.A. Who cares? Sacramento, for whatever reason, young legs, uh, call it as it is, uh, you know, have, have held their own against this uh, Laker team. And then you throw in the way they blew, you know, the, the previous game. I do like playing on those teams. You know, teams that, you know, let their guard down and they lose a game they think they're going to win. They get them a little riled up. little. You know, in the NBA, you know, Joe, you got to find, like, nuggets. Like, why is this team going to play tonight? Because you never know who wants to play and who doesn't in the NBA. So I got a little nugget, little chip on Sacramento's shoulder blowing that game. They love playing the Lakers. They've had success against the Lakers. So uh, why not? Let, let's grab Sacramento getting two, two and a half in Los Angeles. I'm so with you on this one here. And then, of course, the late night game, uh, game of the night here, huh? Uh, They just flipped Giannis to uh, probable now. So he looks like he is a go against the Golden State Warriors. I'm seeing two and a half now is what Golden State is a favorite. 228 and a half as a total in this one, Scotty. Uh, All over Golden State, Joe. You you gotta be, right? I mean, again, you look for that little nugget. It's two great teams, two teams, whatever. But one team lost by 52 their last game. So, you know, Mm -hmm. you lose by 52, you're going to come out with a force the next time out, and it happens to be this game. I mean, they were thoroughly embarrassed on national TV, didn't show up. Uh, you and I were doing a show, right, Sunday afternoon. No. We were watching that debacle. So, yeah, I, I got to figure Golden State at home is going to come out flying tonight. Milwaukee's good. They're playing. They're finally playing good ball. I'll admit that under Doc Rivers. It took them a little while to get going, and they are. Uh, and they got some wins even without Giannis. Even if he doesn't play, they're, they're more than capable of winning. But you know what? Yep. Again, you, you lose. I'd like to know the record, Joe. And I looked it up, and I couldn't find it. I'd like to know the record of teams that lose by, we'll say, 35 or more points 
what their record is straight up and against the spread their next game. I bet you without knowing, it, it's by it, uh, not even close. It, it's it's a winning record. Like you know, like 75% mm-hmm. they win the next time out, at least cover the next time out. You don't get embarrassed like yep. Golden State did without feeling that. So I'm expecting a monster effort. So give me the Warriors tonight. Oh. Oh, and they were embarrassed. It was as bad as it gets, but they are at home now. So an opportunity to uh, to wash that away here. Uh, I see you also like uh, you the Steph to have a pretty big game here. You think it's uh, it's Steph time tonight, huh? Well, listen, in the same vein, right? He had one of his worst games ever. Oh. Four points. Four against the Boston Celtics on national TV. He shot two of 13, Joe. I mean, the, the, it was just a, just a debacle Sunday, right? So, I'm th- again, I'm thinking this guy's going to bounce back and have a monster game tonight. There's a whole lot of defense is not going to be played against Milwaukee, right? But this should be a high-scoring game. So, I, I really, you know, out of all the plays tonight, Maybe they lose, you know, maybe it's a close game. Maybe Giannis comes to play. Maybe LeBron and the Lakers give give us their A game, and then maybe Utah wins at home. Out of the five plays, over 27 and a half points. I, I'd be most surprised if Curry, after going 2 of 13, didn't get at least 28 points tonight against the Bucks. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with you uh, there. I'd be shocked if it wasn't a good bounce back spot here for him. Uh, is it a bounce back spot for Marquette uh, hosting UConn, who pretty much has nothing uh, to play for here? Uh, still no colic uh, for him. Uh, how do you approach this game tonight? Yeah, I'm going to go under, Joe. You know, here's my mm. thinking. I, I looked it up. Mark, are UConn's an over team? Not, not by a lot, 15, 13, and 1. But so it's basically 500. But if you look at the best teams they played in, in the Big East and in Gonzaga, they're 5 and 2 under. You know, when they come mm. to play against the big boys, they don't want to get into they'll, they'll run other, you know, lesser teams off the court, but they ratchet up that defense. Then you throw, uh, uh, you know, Marquette's best player, you know, is not going to be playing tonight. Um, I, I'm going to, and, and they helped Marquette to 53 points just a few weeks ago, winning 81 to 53. I don't think this is getting to 152 points come hook or crook. So I, I, I like more than anything else the under. I don't want to lay the five and a half. I think UConn wins, but that's a big number. Marquette's terrific at home against the spread. Um, and, and you don't know how they're going to be. So give me the other 151 and a half. That's a lot of points, and I don't think it's going to get to that. Yeah, I'm, I got kind of with you there. I think uh, their best chance is to slow it down there, Marquette. Uh, play a little defense and see what uh, see what happens. Uh, we also have a battle in, uh, in the Big 12 here with uh, Iowa State, who just doesn't lose at home, refuses at home. But, man, laying seven and a half. Against BYU, how are you leaning in this one? Yeah, it's a big price, right? Now, I'm going to try and Woo! find the hook, get it down to seven. But uh, Iowa State lost to BYU earlier this year, one of only six losses. So that that's going to – not that they needed any more incentive, but that gives them that extra incentive. They lost by double digits. They played one of their worst games of the year. I'm just going to take my chances they cover the seven, Joe. You know, it's one of those where uh, you, do you really want to lay seven, seven and a half? No, they're begging to take BYU. And BYU's got some nice road wins, right? They, they won at Kansas. They're, they're more than capable. But, you know, you give me the team that lost, played awful the first time, that's really good, like Iowa State is at home. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take my chances they somehow or another win by eight or more. I, and I think they will. I think they win by double digits. So I do like Iowa State in the game. All right, like in Iowa State, we already know uh, nobody uh, has uh, covered more games than uh, Minnesota. Uh, this is a strange schedule. Like, they just played Indiana, did they not? Now they're playing him again, and now I believe they're still a favorite here, five and a half. Uh, what do we do with the uh, with the Gophers here uh, tonight? Do they continue this ATS cover run? You know, this is one of those no-brainer picks, right? You don't even think about it. You just know Minnesota yep. at home, you have to play them. I mean, in if you gave me 10 guesses on who would have the best home against the spread mark, you know, in the last two, two three, four years, right? I, 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 you could give me 30, and I don't think I would bet Minnesota or guess Minnesota, yep. but they do. This team, does, it's amazing. 26 home games. They are 21-4-1 and one against the spread. Crazy. And that's a decent little mix of being favorites or, or underdogs, right? I mean... And they're only laying five and a half. Indiana has won two in a row. So, uh, you know, as bad as this season has been for the uh, Hoosiers, you can make the case they're playing their best ball. And one of those was, was at Maryland. But 
Well, you, you can't bet against 21-4-1. Last 51 games overall, even, Joe, uh, Minnesota is 34-16-1. They're a recovering machine. It, it, it's all they do yep. for whatever reason is cover. And it's only five and a half. I wish the Iowa State line was only five and a half. So, again, buy the hook if you can. Get it down to five. I don't think Indiana's going to win. Minnesota, you know, semi-bubble team. So, yeah, give me the Gophers uh, to win big on uh, senior night. I am with I you know if it ain't broke don't fix it Scotty I am kind of with you on uh, on right. that one there uh, let me get uh, before we get out of here Texas A and M Mississippi State two and a half for A and M uh, it's been a rough go here for these two teams this season yeah it really has uh, this is a, the worst of two evils neither one has great against the spread numbers or trends that you'd want to point to and say okay let me put my money on that team but. Mississippi State's are a little bit worse than Texas A&M's. Uh, 0-6 against the spread last six times on the road as an underdog, as they always are. Uh, you know, Texas A&M only laying two and a half at home. They snapped their five-game losing streak. Really just, a, you know, and Mississippi State is only 2-7 and seven straight up on the road as well. They don't win on the road uh, no matter where they're playing, no matter who they're playing. So um, A&M, 9-5, last uh, 14 home games. Not great, but, you know, they're, they're – They've had some success at home. So, getting a game of basically pick them, Joe. Two evenly matched clubs. Uh, give me the A&M uh, minus the two and a half. Yeah, don't hate that at all. And in the NHL tonight, it's only three games. But one of them, I think, should get some goals. Is certainly Detroit taking on Colorado here. How are you looking at this one? Yeah, we're going to go over. Not going to lay the big wood. Not going to take a flyer on Detroit. Let's go over six and a half. Colorado has either scored or given up five goals in their last four games. They're at home. You know, McKinnon's going to get on the board. Hopefully, keep your fingers crossed. We got that bet going. Uh, again, in a point in every single home game this year. So, mm. why not the six and a half? If four, three, five, two, six, uh, one, uh, you know, whatever it is, I, yeah. I'd be surprised if they didn't get the seven goals the way Colorado's been scoring of late. So, yeah, over six and a half. Yeah, I am. Uh, I'm with you there. I mean, it's going to be a uh, loaded slate here, not just uh, tonight, but of course, uh, all week here, uh, Scotty. I still don't quite understand the whole um, NHL schedule. You get two games, you get 130 in one day and it's you Feast get like, family, two, yeah. like it, <laughs> it's like I don't get it. It's a, it's absolute yeah. feast or famine here tonight, too. So we do have plenty, though, when it's college basketball. Uh, NBA, who are you on uh, with tonight here? Who's coming up at the top? We got uh, me and uh, me and Dave Sherpan. We're going to have Brady Cannon, who you just had on. We'll do a little golf with him. Uh, we got some college basketball. We got uh, our three-team, three-league parlay we're putting together. Oh. Champion of the NBA, champion of the NHL, and champion of college basketball. So we're going to put w- that together. Worth the price of admission. Just yeah, exactly. for that, it's <laughs> worth the price of admission coming up here at the top of the hour and if you're lucky he'll have a uh, go against trend as well that you're going to want to hear about scotty enjoy brother thanks for swinging by we'll wrap it up game time decisions next here on the grid on the road in college basketball is an absolute landmine. I would not do it. I won't do it the rest of the year. I'm done doing that because it just consistently loses. I mean, three possessions in a nine-point game in which the opposition now is the clock, not the actual team you're facing, right? Right, right. And and these guys are taking up shots. I I mean, it's just like, that's why it's the NBA. In-game live, prime time, only on SportsGrid. Athletes in Canada, Wayne Gretzky, Connor McDavid, no longer can be part of these sports betting ads. Now, what's interesting is there is technically a carve-out 
that will still let these athletes and celebrities appear in sportsbook ads, but it's only if those ads are slanted toward responsible games. So you could still have a Conor McDavid saying, hey, bet responsibly on TV in Ontario. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. 4.22, the fact. Man alive. The guy just made himself a whole lot of money, did he not? By uh, by now holding the record for the fastest 40 yard dash. But if it's one thing we know is that doesn't translate into quality football players in the NFL. So uh somebody will uh, somebody will bite and overdraft him because he simply uh ran faster than everyone else. It's just rinse and repeat. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. All right, welcome back in as we wrap up this edition of Game time decisions here on the Sports Grid Network. Want to thank you so much for hanging out with us here tonight. Again, much coming your way here in just a minute here. Uh, Scotty Wetzel, in game live prime time will be coming your way. Dave Sharapan and the crew, and they're going to be covering uh, all the games here tonight. We got uh, plenty here in the NBA already off and running, and we told you. Uh, the Wizards, uh, who have lost, uh, I don't know, feel like three years in a row, it feels like, but they are on top of the Magic right now, uh, 59 to 42. So they are taking it to the Orlando Magic. You've got the Cavs on top of the Hawks early, 24 20 in the first, and uh, the Rockets uh, on top of the Clippers, 17 to 14. And again, the Clippers were laying seven in that game, and I'm not quite sure I trust the Clippers to be laying. That many points on the road, even though the Rockets are on the second of a back-to-back. Also, Grizzlies on top of the 76ers, 28-22. Coming up, 9 o'clock hour, get ready for the Bulls and the Jazz. And we're also off and running here in college hoops here with uh, number one Houston. They are at the break, and they are trailing UCF, uh, the University of Central Florida Knights right now, 31-28 on top of the number one team, the Houston Rockets. We told you Nova and Seton Hall was a big game, and uh, Seton Hall is handling business right now, 45-37 over Nova. They got about 11 minutes left to go in that game. Both bubble teams uh, both need to win this matchup, and of course, Coming up a little bit later here, we're going to have the number two team there, UConn, taking on Marquette. That should be a fun one. And also, Tennessee is taking it to South Carolina, 35-24 to in that one. But you don't have to go anywhere because, again, In Game Live is coming up next. They'll get you caught up with all the big games here tonight. Game Time Decisions will be back again tomorrow. Enjoy your night. We'll see you again soon.